What up guys, how's it going? So today we are going to be going over my tips to better long range flying so you don't lose your whole investment up on a hill or in a forest or in a lake or whatever it might be. Everybody right now is getting into the TBS Micro which is a long range, uh, it's a system that most of you probably have it right now. But I've been flying uh, with the TBS Crossfire, the big brother of that for a while. And trust me, I've learned some things in the past that might be helpful for you guys today. One of those is um, somewhere up on this hill, I even still have one of my investments that I've lost and haven't gotten around to getting it. Um, I'm sure I know where it's at. <laughs> but today we're gonna start off by, I wanna fly out there. And the first tip I'm gonna give to you from where I'm starting right now is line of sight. If you wanna fly somewhere out there, don't think that you're gonna be able to fly from this position through this mountain to get out there. So what we gotta do is we gotta get up this hill first, and then from there, uh, we could start setting up and go through a couple other things that we need to do. All right, so now we've made it to the top of here, and you can see I have a way better view of everything that's down there in that little valley and if you look way out there there's these like two little poles that's gonna be our marker of where we're gonna be flying today if you think that is a far ways out there here comes my next tip start small with long range don't try and push it as far as you can right out of the box start with something small that looks like a far ways out there you probably can't even see it on this camera that's only about a half a mile away and uh, if you're looking at wanting to go like one or two miles out well first you're going to be limited by your battery the size you can only consume so much battery because um, here comes another tip don't try and go far out thinking you have enough battery always remember you have to have enough battery to come back that is a big thing that a lot of people make the mistake on is they do not have enough battery to get back they get lost they they don't have any good markers while they're flying and they basically lose orientation they can't stay up long enough video goes out and basically their investment is gone so start out with something small half a mile away and a good place like this is nice because you got a valley there with some trees you got some like bike trail paths you have some things that are good visual markers in the air that you could see so like I said that's another thing that people are gonna be making mistakes on they don't use like visual markers like this trail or something like that while they're flying they're just looking from point A to point B with just no regrets until their quad just disappears so all that being said let's go into equipment what I have here and uh, we'll just see how I have things set up it's pretty basic most of you guys have everything probably set up the same way and then we'll get into a flight and see how it goes all right, so let's talk about how I have things set up. This is my six inch quad. That's normally what I'm gonna be flying. Most of you guys are gonna be flying a six or seven inch quad, I'd imagine, or a five inch actually. You can do it with a five inch. Um, and the main thing is just make sure your antennas are set up right. I'm not sure if you could see this. Uh, you might be able to see it because I have a nice white background with the overcast clouds today. But I just basically have it in a good, uh, it's like an L-shaped pattern. For those of you that are wondering, this is the TBS uh, micro receiver that's on here. And I just use the, insta the standard antenna. I don't use the Immortal T. Um, I have, I just prefer this one more over the Immortal T. And I use this L pattern um, for its polarization and I have had no issues going pretty far with this setup. Um, some guys I know have had some issues. My main thing is what a lot of people, before you go complaining about that the, the equipment is not working, go to TBS's website and read the manual. A lot of people don't read the manual. I know we're eager to get these things up in the air and flying and have some fun, but make sure you read the manual over and over again to make sure you have everything set up properly and you know exactly how all the functions and the capabilities of the whole system what, what they could do um, if you go through those steps then it takes a lot of ease off of you knowing that you prepped everything correctly and that it's right okay so the next thing uh, you want to just go over is make sure you have the actual module and everything put into the back of the radio correctly and everything is set up in the radio the right way uh, again just go to the manual uh, it should be able to tell you everything about it um, if I were to do it here it'd be a really long video 
I recommend always running an external battery source uh, when you are using the Crossfire. Um, I don't believe you can with the micro, uh, which is fine because that's only running 100 milliwatts. But if you're going further out, long range, and you're using its big brother here, uh, you could go up to like one watt, 500 milliwatts. Also on this, uh, you could go up to two watts actually, on this uh, module here. And you wanna make sure you're running external battery because you will just drain it out of this radio very quickly. So external battery is always a good thing to have. This is a Tattoo 3 cell. 850 milliamp battery and I prefer using the TBS the tuned antenna um, this antenna for the tests I've always done and everything it just seems to be a very good antenna put on one of these like little 45 SMA connectors so I have uh, basically just the right angle that I want on there make sure that it's tightened down right they have the, uh, the also the T antenna that uh, you know, you could run with a different polarization on it, um, depending on how you hold the radio. I tend to hold the radio pretty much like this when I fly, so uh, it's in the right orientation for me with this antenna, and it's worked very well. The one that uh, I hear a lot of people having trouble with the T antenna, make sure that it's not broken. It actually, it has like a ground that's soldered in the antenna for the polarization. If you could spin the antenna, it's most likely it's broken. Everything should be nice, firm, and stiff in there. So let me get everything hooked up here, uh, battery on, and we'll make sure that, uh, yeah, we could get a good flight here. We'll probably go to the half mile marker. Maybe we might push it a little bit further, but this, is all about the steps you should take to learn to fly um, whether it's baby steps going only a half mile out or not but just being under control and uh, being focused on, on what you're doing not, uh, not, not losing your investment all right so while we're at it before I forget one other quick rule of thumb here is your video system. Um, this is actually very important and I can't believe I almost forgot this. So, um, this helicopter is coming in hot. You guys could probably hear it. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, video system. Video system is very important. I use the LaForge module here. This is a diversity system. A lot of you guys might know about this. Some of you might not know about this. What this does, it will switch antennas to basically get the best signal possible between the two. Um, using a circular polarized antenna, obviously this allows you to get 360 degrees around you of video coverage. And then also using a patch antenna like this one here. This is a 8 dBi patch antenna. This is a directional, so if I'm facing those poles out there, it'll give me a directional shot of video signal going to that direction. Now, if you feel a little bit uncomfortable about it, you could always use something like uh, a bigger one like this here. This is like a, a true RC. This is a 13 dBi, a little bit more powerful antenna to get further out there. Um, we could use something like this today and, and I could run the DVR and you guys will see, I'll, I'll most likely, hopefully I'll have a clear view. Today's not the best day. It's very windy and I don't know why I picked today to do a video. Um, so that that being said um using dvr to see the video is key do not fly long range without using a dvr uh it just if something goes wrong that's going to be your only footage to go back and check and see like the last place it went down and where it went down if you're not using like a tracker on your your mini quad or anything like a beacon to find it then yeah it's going to get tough one optional accessory is headphones. I, I wear a little earbud headphone, especially with long range flights. You could, if you could hear your motor still spinning, you have the confidence and you could hear where they're ramping up and things while you're flying. So I say using an earbud is very critical for me for long range flights. I won't do it without one. And uh, yeah, once you get about, I'd say um, a quarter of the ways out there, you even less than that especially on a windy day like this you won't even hear the the quad that's what happened to me when I lost mine is it was a very windy day uh, even when it was in the bushes and I could have been standing right next to it and I was spooling my motors up I couldn't hear it so having a uh, an earpiece is very good you know good smart move to do with long-range flights so yeah we're all set up now and uh, let's go fly I got a nice fresh battery pack here this is the uh, TBS graphene packs, these are very good. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Let's let's do this. T 
teaching you guys something today so you don't lose your investment. I feel good about that. All right, you guys ready for this flight? All right, so um, when we start off any long range flight, make sure what you're always doing is grabbing as many basically landmarks as possible. So a good thing is always to like find trails like this, stay close to a trail. Um, we're cruising at a pretty decent speed right now, but you always want to find landmarks, even whether it's up like going up a hill or something, find a rock. Um, over here we find a little gully and some trees. So we know that gully and trees like maybe halfway mark or something, but we're back on a trail here. So we're just going to keep following this trail. We can see those little, um, stick markers, which are half a mile out and we're doing pretty good. Battery looks pretty good, everything. So all right, so we made it out to these markers. Um, everything looks pretty good. Video looks very strong. We could keep going out, I think, a little bit further. Battery's still doing pretty good. Here's a housing area. There's like a, it's like a dead end, little ravine thing. Um, let's see if we One, can keep going minute. this way. We got a housing, like a cul-de-sac area, and it just keeps going. So yeah, we have a strong signal. Let's head back. Uh, I don't want this video to be really any lo longer than it needs to be. Um, we could keep going out. It seems like pretty good. The uh, video is still good. See, I could dip below this, but you don't want to because uh, you're going to lose signal. I'm pretty high up on this hill, so it shouldn't be too bad. Stay away from stuff like that. Um, always make sure you're, you know where your markers are. I'm going to center the hill. Like, I know I'm directly center right here from where I'm at. 20 um, seconds. If I go this way, we should be running into this gully somewhere around here. So it's right over that, this hill area. 10. Nine, Don't eight, pay attention to that. There's seven, a gully with the trees. Six, so five, four, three, we're on the right path two, one, of where we're going. We should come into, I don't think it was this path, but it was this path here. So remember, if you go behind a hill or anything, you're going to lose video signal. You never want to do that. You just want to, uh, you know, maintain good paths of what you're doing. You know, if you want to make it always look good, you know, yeah, you can fly low and get into little areas and things. See, I'm losing signal in here because I'm going below my line of sight with the video. But eh, there I am. So same thing, if I go back here, I'm sure I'm gonna start losing a little bit of video. See how bad it goes? I could come up above the video, but yeah, that's where people lose it. They don't stay calm and uh, that's how you're going to end up losing your rig, but that was a nice little smooth little go at it. Um, yeah, let's see here. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed those little pointers on how to do long range flights without having to worry about losing your guys' investment. Uh, if you can see, I mean, that was a really comfortable flight. We went past the uh, half mile marker comfortably and we were able to get back with a little bit of battery to spare. That was only a 1300 milliamp battery, but I mean, you can imagine like having some fun going out there. You could cruise out there a little bit slower, get out a little bit further. But that being said, just make sure you guys go through all your steps and read the manual. Make sure your quad's set up right. Make sure your video system's correct. And you guys make sure when you're doing it, line of sight. Do not go behind a hill or a building or something thinking that just because you have the power of the receiver, it's gonna get you back. It is not gonna get you back. You're gonna lose video. Uh, there's nothing you could do when, when that happens. Uh, even you could lose your radio link as good as the crossfire is. We can't penetrate through big things like mountains and concrete and buildings. So just remember that. I hope you guys have a good time flying long range flights. 
If you have any questions, leave me comments below. Like always, subscribe, like the video. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace.